Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at energy transformations. Um, so some types of energy and energy, energy transformations. And at the end we're going to look at um, some questions that involve doing some calculations from a past NCA um, science paper, um, exam paper. So this is part of Science 1.1 um, or Mechanics. So let's have a look. Alright, let's start quickly with a bit of a recap of, and I'll just flip forward there. Um, guys, here are different types of energy. So different types of energy here, active forms of energy. We've got light, uh, sound, sorry, light, kinetic, sound, heat, and electrical. So light energy, anything that produces light is giving off this form of energy. It's actually technically a, a form of electromagnetic radiation, um, but we'll save that for another day. Kinetic energy is the object um, uh, that, that any moving uh, kinetic energy is any moving object has kinetic energy um, so it's kind of the, the moving energy sound is, is technically actually a type of kinetic energy um, it's the movement of particles the vibrations um, particles through the air that actually produces what what we hear as sound um, heat energy and again it's technically actually a type of kinetic energy um, because when you heat a substance um, the particles in it just start to move um, faster they vibrate um, or start to move faster Electrical energy, so the flow of electrons, um, is another type of energy. So this is, you know, what powers all our electrical devices. Over here, our potential or our forms of energy or stored forms of energy. So potential is just means it's it's got the potential to do work. Um, it's got the potential to to do something. Um, we've got chemical potential, so that's when energy is stored in chemicals or, or the chemical bonds in certain molecules or um, compounds. Uh, gravitational potential energy, we've looked at that one, it's the energy, any object um, above the ground um, will have gravitational potential energy, so it's any object in a, in a gravitational field, like on Earth or on the Moon or any other planet, it's in a gravitational field and it's above the ground, it'll, it'll have gravitational potential energy. Uh, we've got elastic potential, so that's whenever an object is stretched, like if you stretch a rubber band right now, It'll have some elastic potential energy stored in it until you let go. And lastly, nuclear potential. Um, so that's energy that's stored in um, certain materials like in, inside a nuclear bomb or inside a, a nuclear power plant. The, the nuclear material um, has energy, uh, nuclear potential energy um, stored within it. Our sun as well. Um, has nuclear potential energy, but there are very few examples, and so it's unlikely that it ever would even come up, and so I wouldn't stress too much about the, the nuclear potential. Now before we go on, we've got to remember this one really important um, key concept in science, is that energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only change from one form to another. This is what we call one of the laws of thermodynamics. And it, it really is a fundamental law in, in, in physics and in science that energy cannot be created, it can't be destroyed, it just changes from one type to another. So there's actually a, a set amount of energy, we, we believe there's a set amount of energy in the universe, and it can change from one type to another, but it, you, you can't actually make energy out of nothing, um, and you can't actually destroy it or get rid of it in any way too. Now you can waste it, when we talk about wasting energy, um, it just means we're changing it into a form that isn't particularly useful. Alright, so let's have a look. Sorry, I went back to that one. Add a few types um, of energy here, or uh, uh, some, some devices or things that change energy from one type to another. And here we start with the swing, and the swing is actually one of my favourites. Really kind of simple, kind of everyday object. Um, but if we look at it, it's quite interesting what, what happens in terms of your energy changes. So if you're swinging, and I want you to imagine you swing up, and you swing up really high, up the top here, what type of energy do you have? Well, you swing up above the ground, so up, up here you'll have gravitational potential energy. And once you've gone up the top there, then you start to swing back down. And at the bottom here, you've lost your gravitational potential energy, but it must have changed into something. So down the bottom here, we've actually got kinetic energy. Now as you keep spinning up, 
uh, as you keep swinging upwards, you go up the other side, and your kinetic energy turns into gravitational potential energy again. And then you swing back down, you lose your gravitational potential energy, and it actually goes back to kinetic energy. So if you think about it, this makes sense, because at the top, at the very top of your swing, you actually, you're almost stationary for a kind of a fraction of a second. You're hardly moving at all, or you, you even kind of stop right at that peak, just before you kind of change direction. So you have no kinetic energy, but you have lots of gravitational potential energy. You're higher off the ground. When you reach the bottom of your swing, that's when you, you've lost all that gravitational potential energy, but that's where you'll be going fastest. And if you've ever hit someone on, your, on a swing, you'll know at the bottom of the swing here is where you'll be going the fastest. So why wouldn't you keep swinging forever if all your gravitational potential energy changes into kinetic, and that changes into gravitational potential again, and it changes back again, and back up this side, and why don't we keep swinging forever? Well, we know that if you, know, if you don't move and if you don't push off the ground, um, eventually you kind of slow down, and eventually slow down to a stop. And the reason for that is um, there's going to be a little bit of air resistance or friction on the rope, you know, twisting at the top, and that little bit of friction means a little bit of energy is lost from here, and it's not destroyed, it's not lost completely, it's just lost as heat. Whenever we get friction, um, friction produces heat, and so we lose a bit of energy here in the form of heat. Okay, let's have a look at our next example. So something maybe a little bit even um, more simple. So wind turbine. So wind turbine, what form of energy? Now I've used this one because it's one that often confuses people. Well, let's think about it. We've got the wind blowing over here. The wind blowing over here. And that makes the turbine here, the blades, spin around. And inside there's a generator here which turns it into, you know, electrical energy. So trying to draw like a lightning bolt or something there to, for your electrical. Um, so let's have a think about it. The wind is moving, so it must be kinetic energy. Um, and the blade's turning, that's kinetic energy. So we get the movement of the wind turns the blade, that's all just kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy gets turned into electrical energy. Alright, on to the next one. So you've, your age-old battery. Now, you've all probably seen one of these, your typical little AA battery. Well, what's going on here? You know, I've often actually, I remember teaching one, um, a class of juniors one year, when we actually opened up batteries, because they were convinced that inside a battery like this, you'd find lightning bolts whizzing around inside. And that's not actually the case. Inside a battery, it actually looks a little bit boring. It's just a, a bunch of often sort of black powder with a sort of, a grey sort of rod through the middle of it, and basically inside we've just got a bunch of chemicals. So it's going to be chemical potential energy. Right, chemical potential energy, and it's going to, we're going to change our chemical potential energy and when we do these energy trans, we call these energy transformations, we often just do an arrow from one to the other, chemical potential energy to produce electrical energy. Now one bit of advice I would give you here is in your test or your exam, all right, make sure you use the potential energy for any of your, your stored forms. So that's gravitational, um, chemical potential, elastic potential, um, or nuclear potential. Make sure you're using that potential term there. Alright, on to the next one. So here we've got a hydroelectric dam, and this is one that seems to come up a lot in tests and exams. It's one that we seem to, to like to ask students about. And it's because the first bit is a bit tricky. It is a little, you know, a little bit harder one. So we notice the water up here. What's different about the water on this side than this side? Well, I know I know one teacher who used to, you know, have a bit of fun with the kids and on a field trip they'd visit a hydroelectric dam and she'd have them look over this side and have a look over this side and she'd try to convince them that this side was more blue and that this side was more sort of a green colour. 
and she'd tell him that's because it's had all its electricity removed. Well, it's not actually that. There's no ele electricity in water itself. Um, but what we have is the water on the side is higher up. You can see the water here, up here, is much higher than the water down here. So the water up here has, it's actually gravitational potential energy. And what happens is there's these special tubes where the water flows down, so it kind of flows down a pipe, um, down into a turbine here. So as it flows or falls down this pipe, it's going to lose some of that gravitational potential energy, but down the bottom here it's going to have lots of kinetic energy. It's going to have lots of kinetic energy. Now the turbine spins, so that's your kinetic energy, and it turns a generator, which turns it into electrical energy. So for a hydroelectric dam, it's actually gravitational potential energy to, all right, it's kinetic energy to electrical energy. Alright, so to electrical energy. So we've actually got a three step, sorry, a two step um, kind of energy chain or energy transformation happening there. Gravitational potential of the energy of the water up here changes to kinetic, it's flowing really fast down the pipe, uh, spinning the turbine, so it's kinetic energy to electrical energy um, when it turns the, the generator, that turns um, that motion, the kinetic energy, into electrical energy. Now one thing that's kind of an interesting question here is, you know, why doesn't this seem to kind of run out? Where, what kind of recharges this? Or, you know, why doesn't the water level here just, you know, get, you know, if we're letting it flow through the dam, why doesn't the water on the, the end up the top here run out? Why doesn't the water on the top and this end run out? And why is it that, you know, we can keep doing this? Doesn't the water at some point run out? Where's it sort of coming from? Well, what actually happens is the water down here, you know, gets exposed to the sun, and some of it evaporates, and eventually it rains back down, and some of it will rain back down on this side, or up in the mountains that flow into this lake, you know, this reservoir up here. So the, the, sun, the sun's energy actually causes water to evaporate and rain back down, and some of it's going to rain back down on this side. Um, and so that's where the energy actually ultimately comes from. It's the, the energy of the sun which is causing the water to evaporate and gain uh, gravitational potential energy. Alright, let's go on. I think I've got a couple more examples. Alright, fantastic. We've got a bow and arrow here. So we imagine the bow and arrow are stretched, and when the person lets go, what's going to happen? Well, at the moment, we've got lots of elastic potential. So elastic potential, I'll just call it, sorry, I put in potential, alright, so we've got lots of elastic potential stored in the stretch string now, and we know it's a potential, a stored form of energy, because while the person's holding it, nothing's actually happening, it's only when they let go that something actually happens, so we've got elastic potential as a stored form of energy, and once we let go, and the arrow flies off in this direction here, Alright, once the arrow is flying off in that direction over there, it will have kinetic energy. So the elastic is turned into kinetic energy. Alright, fantastic. Okay, so I think that's my last example. Yep, and we're going to look at a question now. And this is a, um, a, slightly, a slightly challenging question, I'd say. Um, but the first part is just picking up on, on that, the, that idea of energy transformations. So this requires some knowledge of how to work out the gravitational, sorry, the, the kinetic energy that an object has. Um, and in that case, guys, um, you know, you might want to watch one of the other videos if you, um, um, if you're not sure how to do that. I think actually here you have to work out the, the gravitational and the kinetic energy. So you might pay to watch the other videos if you haven't. 
But anyway, let's get into it. So in a classroom experiment, a ball is dropped onto the floor. Before the ball is dropped, it is not moving and only has gravitational potential energy, EP. Um, as the ball falls, the gravitational potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. The ball has a mass of 100 grams. Complete the labels for the diagram below to show the energy changes as the ball is dropped. Assume the gravitational potential energy is changed only into kinetic energy. So if all of my gravit so at the top here I've got 0.2, 0 0.2 joules of gravitational potential energy and I've got no kinetic energy so it's not moving at all. Now down the bottom just before it hits the floor we know that what? Well we know it's going to have no, it's going to have zero potential energy because the height above the ground is zero. So it's going to have lost all its gravitational potential energy and that's going to have turned into kinetic energy. So all the kinetic energy will be over here will have 0.2 joules of kinetic energy. So we're saying as the ball falls from the top its gravitational potential energy here gets turned into kinetic energy down here. All right. Well, what about halfway? Well, halfway, it's going to have lost half of its gravitational potential energy. It's only half, half, you know, the height off the ground. So it's only going to have 0.1 joule, 0 0.1 joules of energy here. And the kinetic energy, well, it's going to have, you know, it's going to be going faster than it was at the at the start here. So halfway down, it's going to have 0 0.1 joules as well. Okay, so at the top, it's got entirely, it's a little bit like on my swing, so at the top of the swing, it's all gravitational potential energy. At the bottom, it's all kinetic. Halfway in between, it's going to be 50-50. Half potential energy, half kinetic energy. Perfect. All right, B. The teacher tells the students that the ball will be traveling at 2 meters per second. So I'll just highlight that just before it hits the floor. The students are asked to predict the speed of the ball halfway down from three options. So at the bottom here it's going to be going 2 meters per second. Alright, so we've got three options to choose from. Halfway, it'll be going less than 1 meter per second. Option 2, halfway it will be going 1 meter per second. Or option 3, it'll be going greater, it'll be going faster than 1 meter per second. So state the correct option and explain your answer um, and support your answer using energy calculations. You may assume conservation of energy. So conservation means to save. So we're saving the energy here. We're assuming energy isn't lost or destroyed or hasn't gone anywhere else. So all the energy has been conserved. So we need to work out, to work out which option is correct here, we're going to look at, now we know the kinetic energy halfway we, we figured out that the kinetic energy halfway is 0.1 joules. So we know the kinetic energy equals 0 0.1, and that's joules. We know the mass, so that was up here. The mass of the ball is 100 grams, and there's a little bit of a trap there. 100 grams is actually 0. 1 kilograms kg. Alright, fantastic. So what is the speed halfway down? Well, so we've got to work out what the, the speed is. Velocity is our kind of question mark in this case. So we look at our formula. Okay, so in this case it's EK equals half m v squared and you can look at that in the triangle if it's helpful so we have e at the top and our half m v squared on the bottom and so if we look at our triangle we can rearrange that too I might get rid of that um, just to give me some space. If you rearrange the triangle, and we did that in one of the previous videos, we'll get v squared equals 
ek divided by half of m and that is so here we go we've got v then is going to be equal to the square root of ek divided by half m right now we can plug in our values there so it's going to be the square root of and we'll do the square root but last but 0 0.1 divided by half of 0 0.1 and if you do that properly see so half 0 0.1 and then go there's the top number here 0 0.1 divided by that you'll find it's actually going to be the answer is it's the square root of the answer inside here is 2 and take the square root of 2 square root of 2 is 1.4142 blah 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 so we'll just round that up we'll go 4.1 uh, sorry 1.41 so my speed is in this case 1 point four one meters per second. There's one last thing we've got to do. Sorry my four looks a bit funny there. Alright, um there's one last thing we've got to do. We've got to pick our option, so which one was right? The speed is actually going to be greater than one meter per second. So it's going to be greater than one meter per second. Okay, so that's a little bit of a tricky question. You might need to rewind or flip back if you, you're a little bit stuck there. But using your half, um, ek equals half mv squared, or our triangle. So, alright, do the triangle here a little bit tidier. So ek is half m v squared all right um, rearranging that we get v squared is the, the energy divided by half the mass and then we can square root to get rid of that pesky square sign the square root of all that um, we plug in our numbers and you just got to be careful when you do that on a calculator that you don't just type them in you know the square root of and then do energy divided by half time all right you've got to um because we're square rooting the whole thing work out what's underneath here first and, and square root that so it's the square root of 2, 1.41 meters per second. So if you found that a bit tricky or you got stuck, just rewind, flick back, and, and have another look. Okay, so we've got one last little bit to go here. All right, if we have a look here. Okay, so explain why the ball will really be traveling slower than 2 meters per second just before it hits the floor. Um, so remember the science teacher had said when it hits the floor it'll be going two meters per second, um, assuming you know all that gravitational potential energy is turned into kinetic. It'll be going at two meters per second at that moment when it hits the floor. So in actual fact it'll be going a little bit slower than this, and it's asking us here to explain why. It says no calculation is required, but we should describe the energy changes that occur as the ball falls and explain why it's going to be slower than 2 meters per second at the end. Well essentially our energy change is, is pretty simple. Our energy change is going to be gravitational potential energy is going to change into all right, kinetic energy. We've kind of assumed that all of it changes into kinetic energy. But what actually happens is we actually get a small amount of all right, we've got some air resistance. Because it's moving through the, the air, we've got... Sorry, that R is a bit crazy. Um, we've got air resistance, which is a form of um, friction, or we call it drag. Ugh, spelling. Sorry, it's a little bit hard to write with a mouse. Okay, so we've got air resistance, or drag, which is a type of friction. Okay, 
um, and that actually means that we're going to lose some energy. Not it's not destroyed, but we're going to lose not all of it's going to the GPE, the gravitational potential energy, is going to be turned into kinetic. Some of it's going to be changed into heat. So whenever we get friction, we lose some energy as heat. Some of our gravitational potential energy as it's falling, we get air resistance or drag. And to explain that fully, you'd need to say what's happening is the air particles or the molecules in the air are actually rubbing against the surface of the object, in this case the ball. And that rubbing against the surface generates a little bit of heat. So some of the energy here is actually lost as heat due to the friction of the air particles rubbing over the surface of the object. And that would be a full explanation. Cool, I hope you found that helpful and we'll leave it there.